Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We've got to talk about the hype, which always comes around this time of year, long range snowfall forecast. So my inbox was inundated with people asking about, oh, we're gonna get snow on Christmas, we're gonna get snow on Christmas. Let me put a hard stop on that right now. Here's the thing, it's not that there's a zero chance, there's always some chance of snow on Christmas. In fact, every year there's at least a less than 1% chance every single year, I mean, People will post these long range forecasts and go, well, it could happen. Yeah, sure. It also could snow 15 years from now on Christmas. The percentages are the same. We're 12 days out. And what I'm going to show you is the truth, the honest truth, the things that people don't show you on social media because they know it's easy to clickbait you into sharing and looking at stuff you want to happen instead of things that are actually going to happen. It's the way any clickbait works or any kind of scam. And I'm not calling these people scammers, but they know how to use emotion to get you to engage or click on social media posts, just like winning something or getting free something <clears throat> or something that emotionally impacts you politically, religiously. Those are the things that do well on social media. And so people use that with weather as well. So let me give you the actual truth and the honest to God uh, happenings of what's going to happen here. So. All the hubbub was about the GFS model. It's one model, one run. It's not all the data. It's a small segment of the data. So I'll start with that just to be open and honest with you. This was the GFS run from overnight. Runs about one o'clock in the morning. We're still waiting for um, everything to get done, but I'll run through this real quickly. And you can see, um, again, the 14th, the date is right there. That's tomorrow. We'll go through this weekend. Yeah, we have a little system moving through. Oh boy, the way, by the way, huge high pressure system over the Northeast. So if you're a migraine sufferer, you're probably noticing some huge, huge um, issues today and tomorrow. We'll go through um, next week. Got a system early in the week. It doesn't amount to much. Some good snow in the mountains. The big story, I think, next week is this big storm, which tries to develop late week. And you can see the GFS tries to hint at some snow, but it's kind of a weird system because if you've lived in the South or the Southeast at all, snow doesn't come in with the first cold front right the the front that brings you the cold air is not the one that brings you to snow the first system is the one that establishes the cold air and it's the follow-on system that brings you snow so when you see that system it doesn't really i would not count on that doing much of anything but it will establish cold air that's the one thing that's true there will be a cold air mass coming in next weekend behind that first system so that's the table setter right that's the one that changes the pattern brings us really cold air for the weekend before Christmas and into Christmas week. Now, what we need to happen is a system to come in with this cold air in place. And there are some hints, at least on the GFS model, that something tries to get in here, but you can see Christmas day, high pressure is parked over the Carolinas. There's just nothing there, okay? So we have one ingredient. It is going to be cold for Christmas week, but right now there's no storm to bring us anything right now for Christmas. It's the storm the weekend before, that brings us to cold air that some of the models are trying to hint at bringing us some snow but that seems very improbable because it's the front that brings us the cold uh, the thing about cold air chasing moisture that happens a lot with these first systems so let me further show you some information here one of the things about the gfs model is you can run a deterministic run and you hear me say that or you see that online that just means a single run what happens behind the scenes and what people don't share often the GFS runs ensembles. It runs multiple simulations of what the atmosphere is going to do. In this case, you can see there are 31 versions of this, the control and then 30 perturbs, we call them, you know, perturbations or ever, different simulations. And if you look at the GFS model, the latest uh, ensembles, here's all 31 runs. There are a couple, one, two, three, that show some kind of snow next weekend. Three out of 31. So... Three out of 31, that's it. There's a couple more that try to show some snow Christmas week, but it's only one or two. Folks, that's, that's almost next to nothing, right? That's really next to nothing. Now the GFS is one model, right? There's another model, the European model you might've heard of. It does the same thing. It actually has more simulations. It runs 51 different variations. So we'll look to multi-run 24 hour snowfall. Let me look at all the member here. Um, we'll look at the same kind of setup. This one, again, let me go back. We have to go back an hour, uh, one run here because this one only runs out um, not as far. So we'll look at this run. You could see this weekend into Monday, one version of that model has snow, and then next week, a couple more. But look at that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe out of 51. That's not a ton. So this kind of shows you. So online, what people do is they will share with you 
this run and ignore all of these, or they'll share with you this one and ignore all of these. That's the trick. So for me personally, if I'm going to start talking about snow far out, I look for patterns. And in this case, I would look for about 30% of these members to have something. So I would want to see a third of these with some snow for next week to even get slightly interested. Um, because overall, if you look at the chance of one inch of snow from the European model through the 26th of December, it's less than 10% for everywhere east of the mountains. So basically a big nothing, okay? This, this has got to at least be 30%, okay? 30% would be blue or green. 30% is like this shade right here, okay? I would want to see that over us to even start thinking about a pattern that could be favorable. And I would want to see it run after run after run. Unfortunately, we're not seeing that right now. So let's look at the GFS. You're probably saying, Brad, what the GFS, the GFS, Brad, what about the GFS? Well, let's look at the GFS real quickly. We'll look at the same product here. Um, let me look at winter. We'll bring it up here. Um, probabilities of snow. Um, We'll bring it up and kind of show you where's the probabilities at uh, precipitation. We'll show you the probabilities here. So we got to look at, you know, apples to apples here. So look at winter. We'll look at probabilities of one inch of snow. And we got to go back one run here just because they're not run as long. And we'll go out through next week. And you can see I'll go all the way through the 27th of December. And you can see nothing. Okay. So this is the reality. The chance is not zero. It's never zero. It's the future, right? But the chances right now are less than 1%. In fact, if you want to be statistically sound, it's less than 10% um, in 12 days out. Less than 10% 12 days out is nothing. I mean, that's pretty much every day during the winter. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. So when you start seeing these models come out, make sure people show all their work. It's just like being in school and doing a, a, a math problem. Show your work. Show all of the data. What I want to see are all of these runs, right? Where are we at? How many runs? This is the last 10 runs of the, of the European model. Only one out of 10 of these runs has had snow at all. Okay. One thing that's for sure though, and this is the true thing, is we are going to see cold air. So this is the, the temperature anomalies going into next week. One day temperature anomalies from the new AI European model, which does really well in the long range. And you can see there's cold air coming south next weekend. This is next Saturday, Sunday into Monday. Um, and again, this is the week of Christmas, the 23rd, 24th, Christmas Day. You see it cold over the southeast, but also look at the big warm-up. So yeah, there could be some cold next weekend into Christmas, but it goes away pretty quickly. So right now, we can safely say it is going to be cold going into Christmas. The weekend before Christmas, it looks cold for the East Coast. What we don't have is a storm right now. So whatever you're seeing online, just remember, Look at all of the information. Don't let people cherry pick it and show you just one model. Let them show all the models if they're going to show them at all. Because I have a pet peeve that people show the one model that shows snow and they ignore the 30 others that don't. If you really want to be honest, you would show that and go, hey, this is probably not going to happen because these other 30 models are not showing anything. What I would do if I were going to get excited for snow this far out, I would start looking for this cold air, which I'm seeing. Step one. Step two, I would start seeing, hey, I want to see 30% of these ensembles starting to show something. The fact that they're so spotty here with just one or two, you can look at the mean down here. So here's the mean and the control. The mean is this green line. It's near zero. Okay. That's negligible. That's at, at this range, the percentage chance of snow 12 days out being so low is essentially zero. So I just want to let that out there. I don't want to ignore it, but I want you guys to be fully informed on what's happening. And of course, if things change, I will absolutely see. If I see a trend that we're going to see a storm, the cold air is coming. Now we see a storm coming. I will start talking about it, but it's a slow ramp up. There's no need to get super specific and say, hey, there's a chance 12 days out. You know, in the Carolinas, it's only snowed four times for Christmas in 146 years. It's a generational thing. It doesn't happen very often. Our snows happen January, February, early March. So honestly, it'd be great if it snowed on Christmas, but it's not something that happens here very often at all. So that's another thing going against it.